in this video i'm going to start with a very important notion about group theory and this is the topic that will help us to prove the remaining important theorems in this course uh, the final goal being the silo theorems so the important operation that i want to define here introduce to you in this video is called group actions okay so if you have not seen this before this is a uh, this might seem uh, abstract and strange so i'm going to define this carefully do a few examples so that you are comfortable with this notion it's a very simple notion so let me first say that it is not difficult at all it is a fairly easy thing to understand so group action what is the situation so the setup is the following so we are we are going to fix a group which we will denote by g okay and we'll fix a set which we'll denote by s so g is a group and s is a set this set may depend will change according to the context it could even be the group g itself sometimes the most important examples that we will study s would be g itself but the important point to remember is s is just a set even if it has some other structure as far as group action is concerned it is irrelevant so we want to understand the meaning of g acting on us so i'm going to define for you what is the meaning of g acts acting on us so we say so i'm going to write the definition which is very intuitive and clear and explain it after writing it we say g acts on us we say g acts on s if there is a function okay from g cross s to s okay so think of it like this what is g cross s this is the cartesian product so recall g cross s is simply all elements like this is just a set there are pairs the first one coming from g the second one coming from s so i i denote the image by either g s or g dot s or g star s okay depending on the context it's not important sometimes i'll just write g s so, uh, maybe i write g dot s or g star s but what you have to remember is this function is this function does what it it takes an element of g and an element of s so this is element of g we are calling it g this element of s i am calling small s so in this case i am going to write small s okay so i will try to keep this small s to denote an element of capital s takes an element small g of capital g an element small s of capital s and outputs an element of capital s denoted by gs or g dot s or g star s depending on the context so this function is s is telling me so this function is to be thought of as so see g acts on s meaning g capital g acts on capital s means you take a small element sm element small s of capital s small g of capital g and you tell how small g acts on small s 
and produces a third ele a second element of the set S. But this function must have some properties, it is not an action in general. This function has this function must have the following properties really not has should have should have in order for a proper action we should have the following properties two properties one is if you apply e to small s you must get small s for all s in capital S. Okay. E being the identity element. Remember I am supposed to tell you what is small g dot small s. Whatever it is E must map to E must map s to s. And it must be associative in the following sense. If you take g and g prime and apply to s that must be same as first applying g prime to s and then applying g to s. So this must be true for all small s in capital S and small g and small g prime in capital G. Okay, So, we must have a notion of capital G acting on capital S, but this notion must have some basic properties like the identity element must act, must not do anything. So, identity element must take an element to itself and how you apply for two distinct elements of uh, the group, whether you first multiply them then apply to S or first apply one of the elements to S and then the other element, you should get the same result. So, this is the action. So, this is to be thought of as a very abstract situation. G is an abstract group, capital S is an abstract set, meaning it is not, it does not have any properties, S is just a set and you have a function with these properties. So, I am going to give you some examples here to illustrate this action and to illustrate the point that this should work in various situations in different different contexts this this happens okay so consider so first example consider an equilateral triangle equilateral Okay, let's take uh, let's take S to be vertices of it. Right, this is A, B, C. So the set is A, B, C. So for every action, we must have a set and a group. And the group I take to be the group of I will take the group of rotational symmetries. So, if you recall, it has two elements, three elements, R1 is rotation by 120 degrees, R2 is the rotation by 240 degrees. Okay. So, G is this. I claim that in the above sense. So, whenever I say this a group acts on a set, I always mean in the sense that I wrote in the beginning of this video. Okay? So, we must have a group and a set and a way to attach, compose if you want to think of it like this a way to combine an element of the group and an element of the set to produce another element of the set satisfying the two properties that I wrote here that identity element must fix every S and you must have associativity. For example, what is R1? So, what is E dot A? Identity means identity rotation. So, you do not change anything. So, this is A, 
e dot b is b e dot c is c right so this is uh, the first property is satisfied what is r1 dot a so r1 dot a say if you rotate if you can imagine rotating by 120 degrees r1 of a is b r2 of b becomes c r r2 sorry r1 of b, b is c r1 of c is a similarly r2 of a is c if you rotate by 240 degrees a goes to c b goes to a and c goes to b okay so this gives you a function from g to s to s so we get a function satisfying the required two properties okay so you can check that uh, the second property is also satisfied for example what is r1 r2 of a it is r1 of r2 of a so first of all r1 r2 of a can be computed in two ways right so r1 r2 is remember rotation by 120 plus 240 so that is identity so this is a if you first do r1 r2 then you get this but now let's do r1 of r2 of a what is r2 of a in the function you see that r2 of a is c so this is r2 of a is c so r1 of c r1 of c is a so r1 r2 of a is same as r1 of r2 of a so this as you can check with other examples this will the associativity will hold so just think for a second about this example so remember I'm, my goal right now is to explain to you what is a group action on a set the definition i wrote it may not be completely clear so i'm going to give you three four examples at least to illustrate the definition so the first example is this please pay close attention to this and all the subsequent examples and hopefully after these examples you will get a sense of what group actions are in this example we have rotations and we are only interested in the set of vertices of this equilateral triangle given any element of the rotational symmetries we apply it to the set of vertices and we get another vertex so this complete description of the action is given here so the group of rotations is acting on the set so in some sense it is just permuting the vertices okay so if you think about this this is related to the symmetric group because this is the way that symmetric group also acts on th three things so this is a group operation let us look at one more example sn that we have studied in the past which is a symmetric group acts on almost by definition it acts on the set of indices because how do you define sigma you take sigma of an element of sn and you take i so this is my s okay and g is this the set here is the set of indices and the group is the symmetric group so i i take a sigma in sn and i take i in s then what is sigma i sigma i is simply is just sigma of I. right so sigma so for example you take g to be s3 it acts on let's say g to be s4 it acts on s which is 1 2 3 4 um, if you take sigma to be 1 2 3 let's say 1 4 3 2 this is an sn s4 what does it do to 1 it sends it to 4 so sigma dot 1 this is just a new notation but it's the same idea sigma dot 2 is 1 sigma dot 3 is 2 sigma dot 4 is 3 right so sigma and remember the identity permutation fixes each i
right so this is the first condition and certainly sigma 1 sigma 2 apply to i because sigma 1 sigma 2 is a composition is sigma 1 applied to sigma 2 of i okay so this is the associativity so both properties are satisfied so you can say sn acts on the set s okay so this is symmetric group acting on the set of indices from 1 to n is an important example of uh, group actions one more example let us take the group of invertible n by n matrices so these are n by n invertible real matrices right this is a group under multiplication that we have seen in the past and let us take s to be r n so these are all column vectors of length n right so this is uh, for example you these are things like right so this is an rn where ais are real numbers how does this act so what is this action here so now i want to say g l n r acts on r n in the following way okay so you take a matrix and you take a element let's say v in rn so we need to tell what is a dot v but in this case there is a natural <coughs> operation right so we can simply take a times so this is simply product of matrices right so this is an n by n matrix this is an n by 1 matrix so you can multiply and what is the output a dot v is another vector or another element of rn which is how it should be right if you take the group g and the set s when you apply a group element to the set element you must get another set element so i have taken a group element a here i have taken a set element v and i multiplied them to get another set element and one can check that the two properties of group action are satisfied what is the identity element of the group i uh, gln it is the identity element identity matrix and if you take identity times any vector any n by 1 column vector it is it is just v obviously right because identity times any matrix is itself similarly if you take a b times v this is same as a times b v this is again because matrix multiplication is associated so we can say now that correctly we can say that gln glnr acts on rn in all these things i will come back and do uh, more uh, look at these examples again and again at this point i am only giving you several examples of group operations okay so we have so far looked at three examples now let's look at fourth example let g be any group and take the set also to be g so we will see we will see how g acts on itself so remember in general we talk about a group g we will talk about how a group g acts on a set s a group g acts on a set in this example i am taking i am taking the group g acting on 
G itself. But the second copy of the group is really a set. When I am thinking of G as S, the group operation of S is relevant. Okay, there are two ways. Okay, so let me first say, I will define the action as follows. So let's take G in G and let's continue to use S in capital S, but capital S is also again capital G. So I define G dot S to be G S, just the multiplication. So this is the left multiplication by G. So meaning you take G dot S to be S multiplied by G on the left side. There is also a right multiplication that would be G dot S to be defined as S times G. You multiply by G on the right hand side. But now let us look at left multiplication. So the function from G to S, G cross G to G, small g comma small s goes to just the product. Okay, so is this a group action? So this is a group action or not? This is a function, right? That is okay. Now let us check the properties of a group action. Remember a group action must satisfy this problem. E dot S, what is E dot S? Is by definition just E S in the left multiplication, this is S. So this is okay. If you take G1, G2 dot S, this is also okay because the multiplication in the group G is associative. So this is a group action. Okay, so in all these examples, please note that there is something I am doing, it is not just a formality. In each example, the property that I have to check is true because of some existing properties that you have learned. In the first example, because rotations are compositions, multiplication of rotations is a composition and composition of functions is associative we can say this. It is not a, just a formality, it is not a blind symbols I am writing here. In the second example also, product of permutations is by definition composition of permutations which are functions. So composition is associative. So again, it happens to be true the associativity. In the third example, associative, associativity holds because matrix multiplication is associative. That is an established fact from before. Okay, you have learned it, learned it in some other course or it is an established fact in some other course. So because of this existing known fact, these are true. Similarly here, group multiplication is an associative operation by definition of a group. So this is an existing fact which tells us that this is a group action. This action is called left multiplic multiplication of G on itself, clearly enough, right? This is an action of G on itself by left multiplication. This is an important action that we will see again in the course. 